a brand new Chuck Liddell showing up to fight Tito Ortiz, or, or I mean, it's that kind of magnitude. Where you can't write the script better. This is as good as it humanly gets for a comeback for George St. Pierre. Everybody's yeah. geeked up. Everybody's high fiving Buffer. It's all go. First round comes out. And what have we learned that George St. Pierre has been doing for the last four years? He's been training at the Wild Card Gym to be a stand up fighter. Uh, yeah, for those of you wondering or corner. thinking that he, wondering what you saw, you saw Freddie Roach at work. All yep. the many years that he has gone down there and spent not enough time, now with enough time and enough training, George St. Pierre is a complete stand up fighter. And you know what the scary thing about that is? He still has the wrestling. Look how easily he was able to just drag Bis- Bisping down, the bigger man. Well, there were only two takedowns in the fight, and I, it, I'm i going to shine up Michael Bisping here as a wrestling guy, as a grappler myself. That first single leg where Bisping was up against the cage. Now, yes, let's all say that GSP took that with ease to show that he could do it and score the points, right? All you've really got to do is get one takedown, per round and you can bank those and you can trade fists all night long but the takedowns are going to be what scores you the points and ultimately he could have gone five rounds and stolen the whole thing exactly right what i was absolutely amazed by michael bisbing the first takedown he literally sits up like it's not even in front of him like he stood up on on gsp like it wasn't even a shot he shrugged in fact he looked at the ref he's like he's holding me down like he's not doing anything i mean yeah I don't think Bisbing gets enough credit, and I was kind of with Rogan and the boys on this, that Bisbing does get better with more time, and GSP by the second round looked incredibly flat. I mean, he came out really hyped up really fast, and then when he got split open in that second round, I thought it was a complete turnaround. I mean, emotionally, where were you from first round to second round? I, You know, I was very comfortable because I knew if GSP knew, thought he was in trouble that he would spam takedowns. He would keep going for the takedown, and then eventually he'd be able to hold Bisping down because as, as good as Bisping in and as good as Bisping's gas tank is, at the end of the day with a guy like GSP just coming in for you and getting those takedowns, it, ta- it, it takes its toll. It's like, you know, in a boxing match taking those body shots early in the fight. You know, later on in the deep rounds, you know, when it's late, real late in those championship rounds, those things come back to bite you, and it's the same with these takedowns. And, I, I, you know, when, when Bisping was doing the good work from the bottom with the elbows, I was, you know, I was a little concerned that GSP wasn't posturing up. And then I said to myself, you know what, this guy hasn't been in the ring in, the, in a while. He's taking his time. He's going to settle in, and we'll really see what's going to happen third, fourth, fifth round, you know, the GSP kind of rounds, the championship rounds. And I was, you know, it was uh, exactly how I thought it would go. There wasn't any point in that fight where I was like, oh, boy, I made a mistake here. I knew for a fact that that was a good bet, and I knew that GSP at will – could have taken him down. I mean, like you said, he focused mainly on his stand-up, and it looked really good. I mean, it looked really crisp. And, you know, he he did gas a little bit in that second round, but, you know, that that's to be expected with a, such a layoff. But I think as we go further with GSP, I think he should drop back down to 170. I don't know about at 185, and I don't know about that the fight that uh, Dan is talking about with Whitaker. I don't know if that's a good fight for GSP. I don't think it, it, it is, to be honest with you. But if GSP wants to, you know, stay at 185 and defend that belt, you know, as a as an MMA fan and as just a fan of, uh, you know, fights in general, you got to say to yourself, of course, I'm going to tune in if GSP is fighting. And especially if he's defending a belt, who cares what weight class it is? Yeah. Now with his third round knockout of Michael Bisping, for those of you who didn't know or lived under a rock, or if you were smart and had a two team parlay, uh, did you have a two team parlay? My, uh, good man. Oh yeah, I had uh, I had a bunch of parlays on that card. We did pretty good on that card. We went uh, seven and uh, seven and three, I call it seven and four if you count the uh, disqualification. But uh, it was a pretty good card. We, we with, with Dillashaw coming in at the end of the card there to anchor it. It really made it a, a, a day that paid out pretty well. So and if, just, I, just, if I had bet Dillashaw parlayed with GSP, that would have brought me at about three to one. Yeah, right around there. I mean, GSP went off half, even, almost two and a yeah. half, three to one. Even even money, and then a plus one ninety. You know, you're looking at something right around there. It would have been a nice, a real nice payday. And then if you would have had on there, you know, um, you would have had the 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 trifecta there. You would have had the Wonder Boy, uh, Wonder Boy on there as well. 
you know, I, I had a bunch of different parlays going on the card. I had uh, some round robins going. It was uh, any time that you can go seven and four, eight and three, uh, even even six and five if the right six come in in, in on a UFC card, you're going to walk out of there with with collecting money at the counter. And if you if you follow the wagers on uh, this card, you're definitely you're walking away with a, a nice chunk of change from the counter. Outstanding. Uh, so that wraps up UFC 217. Uh, for those of you who don't know, we will be at Tough Enough on Saturday night. I'll say it again. We may or may not have tickets. Uh, my best bet is to tell you to show up, buy tickets. They're 15 bucks. Then uh, to find us on social media. All you got to do is go on Facebook. We'll have it up and running. We'll be doing some live feeds, some things of that nature. But uh, if you track us down, we will, I will buy you drinks. I will bring cash. I will buy drinks at the event. I can't imagine they're expensive at Sam's Town. I think they come with your admission. I'm, I'm not, I don't really mean that. I don't want to get, I can already see uh, Jeff Meyer and Tuff. No, don't say that. Uh, yeah, uh, it's a joke. It's Sam's Town. How many jokes can I make about Sam's Town? You should have done it in downtown. I prefer the downtown venue. I realize you get more space here, but. Uh, it is for Veterans Day. It is for uh, Randy Couture's uh, Operation Knockout. I can't stress it enough. It's a great evening. I believe you can write off 100% of your tickets because all the money is going to Operation Knockout. What a great way to spend Veterans Day than watching people beat the hell out of each other. There will be a couple exactly. of grappling matches, which I just love grappling matches. And, of course, mixed martial arts. But more importantly, we're going to talk about uh, betting for this weekend, and I am going to bet like a madman. So uh, we'll start with, uh, do I want to bet on Friday night? See, that's the question when I come in. Do I want to find a quick three to one? So I'm going to come in with 300 bucks to blindly bet. The goal is to make, uh, originally the goal was to make $100,000, and I've decided to lower that because that might be a little extreme for the bookmaker to go that big. That would take well, that would take a three to one, and either two five to ones or a ten to one, and a ten to one if you go straight days. I mean, that's if you go like a three to one on Friday, right? So take it out to about nine hundred. Take three to about nine, or even to a thousand on Friday, which isn't crazy. A three hundred two or three team parlay is not that extreme. No, I mean a, a three team a three team parlay pays six to one. Right. So, okay. Uh, keep it real simple. I mean, keep it, keep it, uh, simple for Friday. Then Saturday, take that and then run with what run with the favorites on the money line. And then just yeah, I mean, double or trip, go for another three or a five to one there. And then just jump on the, the low hanging fruit on Sunday. Yeah. There's, there's so many different, there's so many different strategies you can go with. It's crucial to get, you know, that first day, if you can get that first day rolling and especially with the game on uh you know, Friday, like uh, Washington at Washington Stanford at Stanford. Right. So what you are know, we looking Wa at point wise? Let's start right there. Washington. It's I feel like I should be taking notes on my own show. Washington's so I don't have to, uh, like, minus track you down on Friday. I'll just have all the bets going and I can go do my day job and play golf and go to Giordano's <laughs> Giordano's. Oh, yeah. By the way, hey, let me know. do an ad for Giordano's in Las Vegas. So they've, they're now running uh, – of course, we're going to do a whole Vegas Strong segment right here. But they're now writing articles on the Review Journal and other places. If you guys want to support Vegas coming to town or otherwise, one of the things they say that it will really help support is go and eat. <laughs> Believe it or not. Go and support the infrastructure. They wrote a big article about this. But go out, buy food, you know, spend money on the Strip and show your support. Uh, things are down. You don't believe me, go book a room at the Mandalay Bay, which was where I was going to stay, Bobby. I apologize. I have opted for my double secret secret location so that I can have uh, access to the betting window and uh, access to Polaris Avenue so that I can get in and off the strip. Uh, Having quickly. access to the betting window is the most important th aspect of I, the whole people, entire thing. I tell people about that days in just for that betting window and the fact that they hand you drink tickets. So you <laughs> can literally go right over to the bar um, and like a $10 bet will get you like two drink tickets on top of your bet, which if you guys know anything about trying to use the bigger sports book, you're lucky to get one drink for a sports bet these days. 
for a hundred bucks. That's it's basically bucks, the, it's a it's crap, man. I don't I it, don't dig it at all. You're better to bet on the pony. Betting a dollar on the ponies will get you more drinks these days. Sure, because you know, with the like I was saying on the uh, previous show, the horses there's an eighteen percent hold for the house one way or the other. If you win, lose, no matter what, because the house is just an agent for the track, so they're not actually booking the bet. They're just you know holding the money for the track, basically. Right. And as a guy who likes to drink O'Doul's, being the alcoholic that I am, so I drink O'Doul's. Uh, one of the other great features about my secret double loca- double secret location of the Days Inn and crappy casino. Not only does it have a station casino window with all of the station casino cards and parlays and things of that nature, they have O'Doul's. Uh, for me, what a wonderful place. <laughs> but I digress. Let us start with Friday night, all you betting fiends. Uh, Friday, November 10th, uh, Washington is taking on Stanford. You've got this one circled on your calendar. Yeah, I like this game a lot. I like Washington in this game. Okay. Maybe. Yeah, there's look this this team, this Washington team, you know, they're 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 playing well and Stanford is, you know, traditionally a very tough team, but you know, with the the spread at only 6 here, it's right in right in my wheelhouse of spreads under the touchdown, meaning one touchdown, you know, wins us the game here. We're going to walk away as a winner here. And then if you tease it down, it's a pick 'em. So, you know, we have several options to start Friday off and we can even do a uh, a, a two teamer with one one game, you know, Washington on Friday leading into Saturday. That way if Washington wins, we could bet the other side of whatever game we bet on Saturday and then we can hedge our bet. All right. So, assuming that we're starting with a uh, bank total of 300 in our quest of chasing uh the maximized dollars Yes, I can bet more people. That's not the point of the exercise. Everybody calm down. Vegas is, I've told this to everybody, you can make 20% in Vegas without even trying. You, you can make 20%. It's not hard. I can give if you the slot smart. machines. I can tell you exactly where to go. I can tell you the table games. I can tell you the time of day. I can tell you how many shoes you should be playing and the cards you should be playing. If you want to make 20%, it's a cakewalk. But nobody walks into Vegas wanting to make 20%. Nobody. Yep. That's Greed. the problem. Yep. Everybody wants a 10 to 1, a 10 to 1, and a 3 to uh, like a th- if you could even go 3 to 1, 3 to 1, 3 to 1 on three straights and you're starting at $300, let me help you out. Okay? And you're pressing it all, you're doing you're doing the ultimate yeah, let it ride. Right? That's that's where you guys want to be. So, do we want to place the whole bank load on three uh, on the first night or do we want to save some some hail mary money on the first night yeah you know it, it what i what i would suggest doing is i would even think about betting washington straight like 220 to win 200 on that first night then that gives you 500 for saturday then on saturday you go you know pretty crazy a couple couple of couples and then on sunday you know you roll all, all whatever your profit is into sunday and then you're rocking and rolling because well, you know when you can set yourself with, with something on a friday that you really like and you can set up the whole weekend right from that i mean it's uh that's one of those you know those those rare opportunities where you have to really jump at it Yes, for those of those that listen to the show, I mean, uh, rhymes with cookers and mows. Um, <laughs> I heard that joke once, and I almost fell over. <laughs> I don't know what everybody else does in Vegas. Um, yes, I've been sober for twenty five years. Everybody, calm down. It's a joke. The show's a joke. God damn, everybody's so uptight. All right. So we're looking to spend about 200 of our bankroll. The correct terminology for you degenerates. Our bankroll for this weekend is $300. So you're saying go to 250, go straight yeah, on I, Washington? 220 on Washington, and that would, that would bring back 200. So we'd end up with uh, 420 there with the other 100 on top. That would be 520 going into Saturday. And then with that other 100, if we really, you know, we're really thinking that Washington's where to go, we can even set up, like I said, another uh, two-team parlay leading into Saturday where we can hedge and guarantee ourselves, you know, a victory one way or the other. And this one is straight up circled. This is, this is the Bobby Capucci double lock pick of the week. Yeah, you know, you know, I don't know about pick of the week, but this is the one that I, I really like this game. This is a game that I've been looking at all week. It's right, like I said, the wheelhouse, the point spread here at six. It's just, it's a beautiful number. I mean, it's really a beautiful number. And if it moves up to seven, then things, you know, things all obviously become different. 
because that number six is so crucial. Seven is such a crucial number in the NFL to get off of that, you know, when you can find a six on a game that you really like, you got to you got to really think about, you know, jumping in. And, and re- remember, we're doing real well with our uh, we have a uh, several several units to screw around with from uh, last week. 